guys, welcome back to the channel with me, your host, Oolong. You know what I'm a big fan of? RPGs. From the tactical combat to the amazing story and gripping characters. And today we're counting down the top 10 turn-based RPG series. That's right, I'm not alone. Chi Chi dropped by the island and I thought I'd have her join us. Kaioke, okay, hi guys! It's your lovely Dragon Ball Mom. Glad to be here. It's great to have you, Chi Chi. Now you've had a peek at the rankings, what do you think? Well, I think it's a very good list. Although the winner is... Hey, hey, no spoilers now. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's roll it. Number 10. It's a trope of RPGs to be in a medieval fantasy kind of setting, especially in the early days. So when a futuristic RPG series called Fantasy Star came out, it blew everyone's minds. Would you like to take this one, Chi-Chi? Certainly. Fantasy Star came out in 1987 for the Sega Master System, and then continued with three more games for the Sega Genesis. The series takes place in the Algo Solar System, and has the party travel between multiple planets over the course of the games. The series had some very innovative ideas for the time, allowing you to pick a wife and play through multiple generations with your child and grandchild, as well as macro combination attacks and manga-style panels as cutscenes. Fantasy Star was so good, it spawned a spin-off series by the name of Fantasy Star Online, but that's for another list. Number 9! One of the cool things about RPGs is the animated cutscenes and great voice work. The Lunar series does both of these very well. It first came out in June of 92 on the Sega Mega CD, with both early installments getting ports to the PlayStation. The Lunar stories take place on an inhabitable moon called Lunar, that orbits a planet known as the Blue Star. There is a great battle between an evil god and a good goddess on the Blue Star which fills the world with lore. I'll spare you the overall details, but the story is really good, with all the games in the series taking place hundreds or even thousands of years after each other. The Luna games put a new spin on turn-based battles by having battles take place on an actual battlefield, where your characters can move around, making AoE attacks more meaningful. Another great defining feature of the Luna series are the enemies that telegraph their attacks by using different idle animations in between turns. This not only adds a layer of depth to the enemies and bosses, but also adds meaning and intrigue to basically everything you encounter. Why can't more games do stuff like that? Number 8! Have you ever been playing a game and thought, you know what would make this more awesome? Time travel! All timey-wimey things aside, there's a lot of potential when you bring this into video games, and Square had the right idea with the Chrono series. Releasing in 1995 on the Super Nintendo, Chrono Trigger showed how amazing time travel in RPGs could be. With a gripping story that starts you in the modern day, and takes you back to the prehistoric era, then flings you into the future. With the battle system using spatial awareness as enemies move around, and text that link your characters together for OP attacks. The the sequel Chrono Cross was released for the PlayStation in November of 99. The game dropped the time travel aspect and explored the idea of traveling between different parallel worlds. The combat changed to having a hit percentage system and an element system that makes certain skills more powerful or less effective at different times. Square had announced plans for a title called Chrono Break in 2001, but we haven't heard anything since. Looks like another great franchise in limbo. Number 7! Did you know that you can find good RPGs in the most unlikely of places? I mean, who would have thought that in addition to all the other stuff he does, Mario would be great in an RPG setting? The first game to introduce RPG elements into the Mario franchise was Super Mario RPG, made by Square and released in 1996 for the Super Famicom and SNES. Oh, please bring back Geno. We want to see more of that epic Star Warrior and his star magic and all the epic cool stuff he could do. And bring back Mallow too. Remember how Mallow thought he was a frog? I mean, how naive is that guy? <laughs> Sorry, did you want me to do this? Oh, uh, 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 y yes, please. Anyway, although there was never a sequel to that, it did spawn the Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi RPG series. In typical Mario fashion, you travel the Mushroom Kingdom and save it from one calamity or another, bringing awesome allies with you along the way. Paper Mario adds another dimension of death to the world you play in, while the Mario and Luigi games really lets that brotherly bond shine. All in all, tons of great games to play. Number 6. How many of you love it when an RPG has a good roster of characters? Diving into their backstories is something that gets me really involved. The how many allies is a good number? Four? Nine? Well, how about 108? That's right, in the Swicoden games, you get to recruit the 108 stars of destiny. Each individual game in the series centers on relative themes of politics, corruption, revolution, and mystical crystals known as true runes. You also get to build up a stronghold as you recruit more characters, which is pretty neat. Teaming certain characters up with each other will allow you to do more powerful combo attacks in battle, and the spells and effects you get from the different runes is really amazing. In addition to regular battles, the games have different strategic war battles, and one-on-one -on -one duels at various points in the story. 
Sadly, development of the series has been halted due to later installments releasing lackluster reviews. Maybe one day in the future, we'll get another chance to find and grow with the 108 stars of destiny. Number 5! When you think of the medieval fantasy genre, dragons are among the first things to come to mind. So of course, making an RPG with a dragon thing would be a great idea. Debuting in 1993 for the Super Nintendo, Breath of Fire warmed its way into people's hearts with a character named Ryu who could transform into different kinds of dragons, and Nina, a winged girl capable of the strongest of magic spells. While not technically the same people in every game, this trend continued with the two character archetypes throughout every game in the series almost. The storylines are also fairly linear for most of the games, but that gives it a lot of focus on the plot, making it very, very good. Breath of Fire has tried a lot of different things throughout its games, from using your party members' abilities on the world map, to the gene splicing system, to playing through the view of two different characters in the game, to limiting your dragon powers beyond your tolerance. Still, how can you not love this? Pretty epic, I know. Number 4! Oh, what's that? Not enough dragon hype, you say? Well, I agree. Who could forget about Dragon Quest? With releases all the way from the NES in 1986 to the PS4, Switch, and 3DS in 2017, Dragon Quest is a favorite of people everywhere. Nearly every game in the main series has either an anime or manga adaptation or both. It's had a significant impact on the development of console role-playing games and introduced a number of features to the genre. It's also drawn by Dragon Ball artist Akira Toriyama. How cool is that? Most Dragon Quest titles have you play as a hero who was out to save the land from peril at the hands of a powerful evil enemy, along with a group of friends. There are recurring monsters including the slime which became the series' mascot. Dragon Quest is one of the few long-running video game series to have a stable key development team. Scenario writer and game designer Yuji Hori, character designer Akira Toriyama, and music composer Koichi Sugiyama have handled the retrospective roles from the beginning. Looks like we'll have even more great titles to come. Number 3! Sometimes RPGs are hard. Like, really hard. That's kind of a staple for the Shin Megami Tensei. Ooh, Persona? Let me get this one. I love Persona. Well, yeah, Persona is included, and yeah, sure, go for it. All right! The Shin Megami Tensei series was originally based on Digital Devil Story, a science fiction novel series by Aya Nishitani. Most Megami Tensei titles are standalone entries with their own stories and characters. Recurring elements include plot themes, a story shaped by player choices, and game mechanics. The most notable being the ability to fight using and often recruit demons or persona to aid the player in battle. Elements of multiple philosophies and religions, occultism, cyberpunk, and early science fiction have all been incorporated into the series at different times. Shin Megami Tensei has become well known for its artistic direction, challenging gameplay, and music. It has equally raised controversy over its mature content, dark themes, and use of religion imagery. The series includes 64 games, 24 books, 25 manga series, and 12 different anime series and movies. Wow! Number 2! Alrighty, the runner-up. Now these top two are really close. Honestly, you could probably switch them out if you really wanted to. It really came down to a matter of my personal preference. With that said, I've always had a ton of fun in Pokemon. Starting on the Game Boy in 1996, with its most recent release in 2017 for the 3DS, Pokemon has quite literally dominated the gaming market, with more than 280 million games sold up through 2016. Pokemon is the second best-selling video game franchise, right behind Mario with 500 million. The games are common released in pairs, each with slight variations, with an enhanced remake usually releasing a few years after the original versions. There's just something about catching and raising your own Pokemon that draws people in. Heck, there's even advanced EV training that you can put your Pokemon through to make them the very best. Like no one ever was. One of the best things about the Pokemon series is its ability to bring people together. Everyone who plays Pokemon is always wanting to challenge other trainers to battle and showing off their collection. There's a 900 episode anime series, 19 movies, and even a trading card game that spans over 3,000 cards. Truly amazing. Just don't have Pikachu speaking English anymore, okay? Please. Now, not every great RPG series could make this list, so before we get to our top spot, let's take a look at a few that almost made the cut. Number one! 
When a game dev starts out, they have a vision, a carefully crafted idea that they, and usually many others, pour their hearts and souls into. And sometimes, that dream doesn't work out. After working for a year on several NES titles that bombed, Mr. Hironobu Sakaguchi questioned if he had chosen the right career path at video games. So he created one last dream as a last ditch effort, a Final Fantasy. In the coming years, the series exploded with many more titles, each game adding something a little different from the last. Every story centers on a group of heroes battling a great evil while exploring the characters' internal struggles and relationships. The series has been commercially and critically successful. It is Square Enix's best-selling video game franchise with more than 130 million units sold, not including Final Fantasy XV, and is one of the best-selling video franchises of all time. Final Fantasy is known for its innovation, visuals, and music, such as the inclusion of full motion videos, photorealistic character models, and orchestrated music by Nobu Unamatsu. It has been a driving force in the video game industry and has affected Square Enix's business practices and its relationships with other video game developers. It has also introduced many things now common in RPGs, and has been credited with helping to popularize console-based RPGs in markets outside Japan. There are also so many installments in the series that are just incredibly solid. All in all, one of the most, if not the most important, innovative series in the RPG genre. So that's it, y'all. My picks for the top 10 turn-based RPG series out there. Did we miss anything? Perhaps you're a fan of a series that didn't make the list. Let us know what your favorite turn-based RPG series is in the comments below. I'd like to give a big shout-out and thanks to you, Chi-Chi, for coming on as well. Would you like to tell the viewers what you do on your channel? Anytime, Piggy. Anytime. And yes, of course. Come over and check out my channel while I do Let's Plays, collabs, reacts, and a lot of other fun stuff. So feel free to come over and subscribe to it. Heck yeah, guys, go and check her out. I actually did a Would You Rather collab with her on her channel, so go and give that a look and have some laughs. Alright guys, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet for more awesome move on content in the future. Remember to take care of each other. I'll see y'all later. Take care. Kai, okay, bye?